Then the question is, you know, the theoretical question that one or all of us have to answer is this, right? Yeah. Hmm? Rutherford proposed that electrons, so drawbacks of Rutherford and Rutherford. Uh, Rutherford proposed that electrons revolve at high speed in circular orbits. Huh. So Rutherford model said, then where are the electrons? Oh, electrons are there. Okay. So he said, well, so there is a nucleus and uh, this is the theory was, there is nucleus here, hmm? nucleus here and uh, you have got swarm of electrons. He said electron uh, swarm of electrons, sorry, not the part. He said uh, there are electrons here, 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 everywhere around it. Okay, so this is nucleus and this is what the model is given by? By whom? By Rutherford. Huh. But his uh, theory here uh, initially is there is electrons and there is protons. Hmm? So therefore, uh, Rutherford said, well, the distribution is like this. Then immediately, of course, he started with that. Then if you keep an electron here and a proton here, then there exists what between them? Electrostatic force. Isn't it? So due to electrostatic force, this electron can immediately go and merge with the nucleus. Huh. Then he said, no, 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 uh, it's not so. These electrons are revolving in, in circular orbits. Discrete circular orbits. Okay. These electrons are revolving in discrete circular orbits. Okay, so he said, you know, you take a stone hmm, uh, tied to a rope and then you whirl it. Hmm? So the stone keeps moving in a circular path. Yes. The tension in the string uh, is providing the necessary centripetal force. Yes. Huh. And uh, the initial velocity that you give to the electron is sufficient to ensure that the path is there unless other external forces act. So here he said, fine, this is the model that he gave. Fine? Hello? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so fine. Now I'll ask you a question. Uh, why this theory was disproved? Electron revolving around the nucleus. Okay, uh, it should be fine. Sir, Maxwell's theory. What is that Maxwell's theory? Sir, when a uh, charged particle accumulates itself and it's uh, energy in the form of uh, electromagnetic radiation. Right? Hmm. So, by this uh, fact that the uh, electron will capture it itself because it is following the circular path. Mm -hmm. And so it must be continuously emitting electromagnetic radiation and losing energy. Right. So it eventually collapses into the nucleus and it would cause the nucleus to be uh, atom to be inherently unstable. Fine, excellent. Very nice answer. So so the classical electromagnetic theory, uh, it's like this. You see, a, a charged particle, any charged particle. Okay. Um, so you see now, one more aspect I want to say, charged body, okay, and there is charged particle, okay. Now, uh, small difference, so you see, when do you call a body is charged? Well, uh, I think in high school you have fed it, you know, you take a, um, glass rod and rub it against silk, right? Right? You take a glass rod, rub it against silk cloth and take another glass rod and rub it against silk cloth, right? And uh, when you suspend both these glass rods, they will ripple. And you take an ebonite rod and uh, uh, rub it against fur and then you keep an ebonite rod and a glass rod, they will attract. I suppose all of you remember this experiment? Yes. yes. Hello, everybody there? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Okay. Huh. So, initially you see, uh, these uh, small experiments there, you know, concluded that uh, these uh, materials, ebonite and, um, you know, glass rod, they acquire properties to attract other bodies. And that is how the word charge came into picture, initially. More of this I have discussed in electrostatics. Uh, that's it. But however, electron and proton are already charged. You please understand. If I take a body and rub it, then only they become charged. But electron and proton are inherently charged. What do I mean by inherently charged? 
intrinsic. Yes, trans is intrinsic. Wonderful, wonderful student. So you are using the right word. Intrinsic means by birth only it has that property. Yes. Huh? So you see electron. So if I say this is electron, okay. So what what makes an electron? You remember the jargon that I say. You call a cat a cat because the cat has properties. It has properties of a cat. So we identify like this. So how do we identify an electron? By two of its properties. Yes. What are the two properties? One is charge. Yes. Other one is mass. Right. Yes. yes. Or and basically it is energy. Yes. So an electron inherently has both these things. Yes, An electron inherently has both these properties. Hello, are you with me? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Sir. So mass of the electron we usually denote it by this and charge of the electron we denote it by this. Okay, so these are the things. Now, if I keep an electron here, okay, and uh, say electron 1 and I to keep electron 2, yes. both of them are electrons. Hmm? So what happens if I keep these two electrons in close vicinity? Depends on the distance between. Yeah, some distance, some finite distance. Ah. The static is the Loud. Experience and attractor close to two, gravity is there, and the repulsive close to two, electrostatic. Excellent, excellent. So it experiences two types of forces simultaneously. <laughs> One due to the gravity. <laughs> Okay, so when so this force is when you say this force, it is G M E G M E divided by alpha, and at the same time they will repel. <coughs> this force is gravitational force. This repelling force is electrostatic force. Electrostatic force. Okay, and this electrostatic force will be K Q E. Sorry, K the charge of the electron into charge of another electron divided by as okay huh. so you know g it is universal gravitational constant 6. Point, how much 6.67 into 10 to the power of minus 11 units and the the k is 1 upon 4 pi anyway i'll come into those details and charge of the electron i think all of you know what is the charge of the electron? 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Okay. So, therefore, both the forces are acting. But now, uh, will it get attracted or repelled? Because gravity is pulling and this is repelling. Yes. So, this electrostatic force is very huge compared to the weak force, the gravitational force. So in this universe you understand, huh? see if um, you take Sudhir Murthy and throw him from the second floor, he will instantly fall. So you see gravity is so powerful, it pulled uh, Sudhir Murthy down and that's it, okay. So it's so powerful. But you see electrostatic force and uh, uh, there are other forces, nuclear forces, the forces that are there uh, within the nucleons, they are much, much more powerful than this. Understand? So keep this in mind. You should have an andaza. You know this. This is all going to be handy when you answer some interesting questions. So inherently, the electron has got this property. And similarly, one more material called proton. Okay, proton. So what are the properties of proton? Faster. Hey, some other students also try to answer. Don't keep quiet there. Come on, you know this, you have learnt all this and you have been using this every day. You should not shy away from this. You will learn only if you interact. Come on, don't keep quiet there. Hello. Yes. Ah, yes, tell me. So, Pratyush is one wonderful student who is very sportive and here Dhimant is there. Sijan, I, have, I want to hear from other students. Come on. At least make a good beginning for second year. See, I started with the topic which all of you know. So now you should be very much, you know, enthusiastic to answer. See, the more you answer, the better you learn. 
ಮೈಕ್ರೋಸ್ಕೋಪ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ so even now you know nobody has seen atom and all okay but uh, you see uh, it's such a wonderful thing you know it's a, it's a very very powerful concept concept in swords is an idea <coughs> so science is a monument of concepts that's what i told so you have to appreciate it as a concept then it is best understood okay whether electron is a see now you will soon see as we go further that uh, electron is a particle or it is not a particle yes, so uh, some experiments will establish that electron is a particle and some experiments will establish that electron is not a particle then if electron is not a particle then what is it you will learn you have all this theory and we will enjoy learning those things so therefore don't build a uh, some strong uh, you know assumptions and uh, you know start uh, living with them okay keep it open so in the context of uh, the dalton theory the thomson theory the rutherford theory and the bohr theory well electron is a particle which has inertial mass and charge right ha huh. but further when we go hmm, you we will have to understand that electron uh, is not a particle okay electron is not a particle so that is very very interesting okay we'll come to that so therefore accept it as a concept and in physics you know the it is very simple you know you accept it as a concept concept means it's an idea a useful idea uh, which will help us to explain many wonderful things to build science you know you need concepts and keep your options open don't stick to it in this context if i say electron is a particle i can explain these things okay so that is how you know you have to build it all right so with that understanding you know the scientists constructed the this model and uh, the famous experiment of rutherford uh, scattering experiment was performed and then rutherford proposed that electrons evolve in high speed in circular orbits around positively charged nucleus when the charged particle electron revolves around positively charged particles in, in, in nucleus it needs to be accelerated so as to keep it moving in circular orbit whenever a, a a body is moving in a path other than straight line then obviously you know there has to be a component hmm, of the acceleration which is uh, perpendicular to the path perpendicular to the path of course the velocity at that point okay there has to be component huh? huh however according to electromagnetic theory <coughs> whenever a charged particle such as an electron is accelerated around another charged center nucleus which under the force of attraction there will be continuous radiation of energy the loss of energy which slow down the speed of the electron this would reduce the radius of the electron orbit eventually <coughs> the electron would fall into the nucleus the result would be that atom would collapse but this does not happen because you know if that was to happen it would have happened instantly yes, <coughs> then the other part scattering experiment could not have taken place only yes, so we had to still stick on with rather with the thomson model yes, but now it is not happening and uh, if so now you see uh, competing considerations competing consideration means on one hand uh, the rutherford scattering experiment can best be explained by you know considering the electrons is moving in circular path 
but at the same time the classical electromagnetic theory very clearly says no no it is not possible H, now I am making a statement, now you have to be alert. A charge in motion, a charged particle in motion loses energy. Am I right or wrong? Accelerated. 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 That is very important. If the, very, very good students. If the charged particle is, is at rest, it does not radiate energy. If a charged particle is moving with constant velocity, then also it does not radiate energy. It only radiates energy if it is accelerated. And that is the classical theory. Keep this in mind. Okay. And uh, uh, this charged particle is moving, assuming that it is moving with uniform speed, but in circular path, then there is always centripetal acceleration. And as a consequence, it is accelerated and therefore it should lose energy. Okay. <coughs> Thus, Rutherford's <coughs> atom could not explain the stability of atom. Now, this word is important. Okay. Say, so, stability means, well, it, there is, what is stability? I have explained this. State of minimum energy. State of? Minimum energy. State of minimum energy accepted. Other than that? Okay, fine. So, in our mechanics, we have studied equilibrium as what? When two or more forces are acting and the... Yes, that's how it is. When two or more forces are acting on a body and the body continues to... Its motion does not change. Motion does not change means either it is at rest or if it is moving with uniform velocity, it continues to move with uniform velocity. Yes, yes. Then we say it is in a condition of equilibrium. Correct? Huh. Now, yes. huh, this is equilibrium, but what is stability? How will you use the yes, concept? Sir, huh. it's, it's different from equilibrium position, it will always be greater than equilibrium position. Yeah, so uh, you have to, you, when, whenever in physics it is asked, you know, you have to state the conditions and put it. Come on, somebody else also try to answer this. Sir, it, it should be at equilibrium also, sir, and it should be at its lowest energy state. Then only the body is stable. No, that is not the way stability is explained. Come on, new students. Sahana, Aizan, Sakshi, Kushal. Anybody? Try to answer. Girls, Vaibhavi, Neela, Spurti. No, we have discussed this earlier. That is why I am asking. See, these are the key terms. Now, I am telling you, every term here, every word, you have to learn it profoundly, deeply. If you see the question papers of all the competitive examinations, you will find that, you know, a teacher, the examiner decides to test your conceptual clarity. Then he will coin a beautiful question to bring it out. Okay, now you see the word stability. Hmm? Well, one of your friends did say something about it, and it's, uh, I mean, almost right. Only thing is, you see, when external disturbing forces act on the body, what did I say? Acts on the, acts on the system. Acts on the system. System can only be a particle in equilibrium. When external forces, small external uh, uh, disturbing force, small external disturbing force acts on the system, the system should get disturbed. Understand? The system should get disturbed. Right? See now. Huh? See now. This wall is there. Huh? I am applying external disturbing force to this wall. So this wall is undisturbed. I can't use the concept of stability. Oh, this building is stable. No. Understand? So, you see, uh, if you take a bowl and if you keep a marble, the marble will be there at the lowest point. Now, if you disturb it by applying some force, the marble will get disturbed on the removal of external disturbing force. The marble 
has a tendency to return back to its original equilibrium position. Yes, sir. Then we say it is a stable system. You got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now try to uh, and try to uh, try to use this here. Hmm? So what it says? Well, you see the electron is revolving, hmm? and uh, uh, maybe that there is centripetal force acting, so it is disturbed. But then there should be uh, restoring forces, inherent restoring forces, which will quickly bring back the electron to its original stable condition. It is possible, yes. but it is not happening here. So therefore, it is not stable. Understand? So that that concept has to be applied here and say the atom is not stable with this configuration. Okay. Yes. Sir. Hmm. Yes. So Rutherford atom could not explain the stability of atom. Failure of Rutherford's model, that is, reduction of radius of orbit, is shown below. The Rutherford proposed that electrons revolve around the nucleus in fixed orbits. However, he did not specify the orbits and the number of electrons in each orbit. Even he could not uh, explain this. This is another important reason why the Rutherford theory collapsed. I'm sure all of you have said this. This is one more thing. Hmm? So, because this question that was raised to him, he, his theory could not answer this question. So, uh, uh, he could not specify what is the radius of orbit and he could not even specify the number of electrons present in the orbit. Now, students, why I am putting all these things is because, you know, uh, well, the scientists were, uh, now you see, this uh, first thing, that is, electromagnetic theory, you know, it does it will collapse into the nucleus, was something to be investigated. Hmm? And this one, Rutherford proposed electrons revolve around the nucleus, so he could not specify the orbits and the number of electrons. Now, this becomes the PhD questions. You understand? When they do PhD, that is research. So, it is called, something is called uh, problem formulation. So, first you have to formulate what is the problem. Okay, that itself will take one, one year to two years. You may not believe to, to formulate the problem itself will take one to two years. So, the form, problem formulation should be there. So, in those days, this was the problem which was formulated. And then, experiments were conducted to understand this. I suppose all of you got this, friends. Hello. So, therefore, these two questions still lingered during those times. Okay, now, even during his time, hmm, uh, well, uh, the there is uh, this, uh, there are questions asked on this formula also. As you can see here, <coughs> Rutherford experiment, the entire atom is electrically neutral. According to Rutherford's scattering formula, the number of alpha particles, sorry, the number of alpha particles scattered by an angle theta by a target n phi, n theta is equal to n naught n t 2 x square, you know this formula. Uh, it was, you know, to experiments, uh, this formula was enunciated. So, where n naught is so and so, so and so. And very important, you see this diagram is uh, still very much more important. Um, you can see here that the alpha particle, some of the alpha particles that started its journey from here, it started moving towards the nucleus hmm? and uh, the alpha particle which was directly aimed at the nucleus, I repeat students please be careful here, yes, you have, we have got numerical questions on this, yes, on this yes, diagram. Uh, Sujan, have you solved some numericals on this? Yes sir, like we have done in distance of progress of progress. Ah, this is yes. Yeah. So, here you see this alpha particle that has come very close here, then it is rebounded. So, it cannot come closer than this. So, that is this R0. That is this R0. And now, here you see um, many uh, properties, such as you see here, Z is coming here. What is Z here? The number of protons. Okay. Electron or E stands for the charge of the uh, electron or proton, of course here it is proton, right? And uh, Ex is the kinetic energy of the alpha particles. Yes, alpha yes. particles, which are alpha particles here when they are starting here, you know, their kinetic energy. So all these things, 
they'll get connected and uh, from that you can get the value of now why this uh, formula is uh, very significant here is because you see an experiment is conducted you got some result but then you must build a math model for the result and uh, the experiment should work in accordance with this math model then only you see that becomes a theory because unless you measure it will not be a physical quantity understand unless you measure so and this formula says well you know if uh, m is the mass of the alpha particle if uh, the energy of the alpha particle is this if the number if the uh, number of uh, electrons a uh, number of protons is z then if you fit all these things then i should get r not and my experiment also should reveal r not okay so that is one part hmm? then you can see the other diagram here if there is an electron which is revolving it is going to go in spiral and collapse it is going to go to spiral and collapse now this diagram is also important because if you just keep an electron here which is not moving then the path of collapse should be a straight line hello yes sir yes sir the path of collapse should be a straight line yes, sir. Huh. but if you keep an elect if this electron was having some velocity uh, perpendicular to this radius and uh, Uh, then you see the collapse is going to be spiral in nature it will not be straight okay ha huh. then can anybody tell me why it will be a spiral why it will not be a straight line that is electron khachak uh, it will should go and fall into the nucleus why will it not go and fall and this is compared to the i am not happy with the answer see your answer must be based on science you should say according to this law or something come on other students please try sir because it has a velocity uh huh and there is a force directing towards the nucleus that centripetal force you can say it mm. become a centripetal centripetal force so like it starts moving in circular orbits so that i'm an accelerating for it according to maxwell's theorem we can say that it you didn't understand the question why should it go in the spiral path why not straight why not straight see this is possibly charged nucleus this is electron negative discharge particle so if it was stationary it would have gone and collapsed like this but since at the instant it had velocity vector like this so it went into a spiral and then it collapsed why it should go in a spiral path come on everybody try so as it goes closer to the nucleus the personal attraction also increases no? but okay that means you are you are trying to tell me the answer that if the electron is here then what happens but before it comes here itself it was spiraling you know So the centripetal force can change only the direction of it. Okay. So there will still be a uh, tangential component of velocity at the end. I wanted you to say, you see, this velocity. Okay. So that means the momentum. Okay. So now Newton's first law is very clear. What does Newton's first law say? Well, the momentum of the electron right the momentum of the body it can only be changed by external force here the external force is the centripetal force centripetal force given by the attraction but you see this vector this momentum vector cannot be damaged just because of this in accordance with newton's first law i wanted you to use the word newton's first law so therefore this component of the velocity in this component of the velocity see this one uh, see this is accelerated here but what will happen to this component of the velocity vector when the uh, electron is here it will remain the same it will remain the same it will remain the same yes it will remain the same why because the force yeah ha you you see it will remain the same because if there was any component of the force in this direction then only it will change yes 
So otherwise it will not change. Okay. But continuously you see the direction is getting changed. So therefore the speed of the electron continues to be there. Yes, sir. The speed will always be there. Okay. And when it hits here, it is going to hit with the with the certain velocity, with certain energy. Okay. So uh, well, we will uh, see some interesting situations out of this also. I'll uh, keep this in mind. So because uh, if an examiner wants to test uh, uh, whether you are aware that the electron collapse will follow a spiral path, yes, he will coin a question or two on that. So the art of preparing for all these examinations is that you know every aspect that is presented, you have to view it very carefully, very sensitively and learn as much as possible from those things. And you can anticipate, well, the examiner wants to ask a question on this, or on this, or on this, or on this. So it's wide open to all, to all. And he is definitely going to ask you a very tricky question, very interesting question. So at the time of learning itself, you know, if you pause and think for a while, why should it spiral? Why should the electron come to this point and then return back? What happens to the alpha particle when it comes to this point? What happens to the alpha particle when it comes to that point? When it comes to this point, what happens to the alpha particle? It experiences greater repulsion. What happens to the alpha particle when it comes here fast? It's kinetic energy becomes zero. Ha, ah, that is the answer. Its kinetic energy becomes zero. Its velocity becomes zero. Right? Ha. Ah, then what else? What other concept can you connect? Kinetic energy becomes zero. Velocity becomes zero. Any other physical quantity worth mentioning here? Yes, potential energy. Maximum energy. So you can also say that, well, if you consider this alpha particle very far away from the nucleus, it is having some kinetic energy. Okay. Huh. Of certain magnitude. Huh. And when it comes to this point, this entire kinetic energy is converted into potential energy of same magnitude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See that this this is all you have to do in physics, you know. You have got concepts, you have got uh, the physical quantities and you should relate them. Physics is all about relation and we call the relations as loss. Okay friends, yeah it is 7th.